this week, the CNN Freedom Project took you to southern Vietnam. We introduce you to a community of Cambodian refugees forced to live and work in a garbage dump. Now, one small school is helping to lift them out of poverty and to protect the children from human traffickers. Now, here's an excerpt from Natalie Allen's reports. No one in the larger community was counting them as human beings. They were nobodies. The poverty is crushing, making these already vulnerable people easy prey for human traffickers. And the children are most at risk. That's why Carolyn opened a school, Catalyst, to educate kids about the dangers of human trafficking, especially girls. These children live with the threat of child traffickers every day. They grab them off the streets. They trick parents into selling them, offering jobs that don't exist. Carolyn says with an education, they have a chance. Natalie Allen there highlighting the work of the Catalyst Foundation. Its school has more than 200 students with another 100 on a waiting list. And earlier, I spoke to Matthew Friedman of the United Nations Interagency Project on Human Trafficking. And I started by asking, what else should be done to protect these children? Well, I think the, the idea that there's an organization that's already going and uh, focusing on this is, is the first step that needs to be kind of addressed in this type of a situation. Uh, unless people care enough to get involved, unless people care enough to uh, kind of focus on these vulnerable children, it's just not going to happen. Once they are basically identified, what they need is a safe, secure place where they can uh, basically live out their childhood, uh, get an education, uh, be able to thrive like any other child in the world. Now, the Catalyst Group is a grassroots NGO that is there at this dump site in Rakia in Vietnam, and they focus on education, educating the local children so that they can protect themselves from predators. But is education enough? Well, the thing is that education by itself, just knowing what uh, uh, a, a problem is, uh, isn't always protective. What you need to do is to teach the children that if a person comes and approaches you with a particular message, this is what that message might mean. This is what might happen to you. So offering them the tools and the means and the understanding to protect themselves in that type of circumstance is extremely important. Uh, and so uh, uh, the thing about human traffickers and these, these individuals that do this to, to children is they'll use any trick in the book. They will use any lie that is going to uh, perhaps get a particular point across to a child to uh, accommodate what that child wants or needs. And that's where it becomes very difficult because children are used to listening to authority figures used to listening to individuals who are older than, than them, and basically what they will do is, is follow them. So you have to basically say it's okay not to follow them. Now, all this week we've been focusing on one corner of Vietnam for the CNN Freedom Project. Meanwhile, where you are in Hanoi, there has been a high-level summit on how to fight human trafficking. What has been dominating this, the discussion there? Uh, basically, on uh, bringing the entire counter-trafficking community together, led by the governments themselves, going and saying that we ourselves can't do this by ourselves. It's the governments, it's the UN, it's the civil society, and even the private sector. So much of the discussion at this particular conference has been focusing on the unity that needs to exist within the counter-trafficking community to identify the comparative advantages of each of these different groups to be able to really make a difference. Now, I read someplace that about a quarter of a million people are trafficked each year in the greater Mekong subregion. This is a startling statistic. Can we ever end human trafficking? I think we can, actually. I mean, the, the idea of people feeling like trafficking can't be uh, sorted out kind of exists because what we tend to hear are the stories of the, the misery that people face in, in all parts of the greater Mekong Sug region. There are many different organizations that are addressing the problem. They're doing it at the community level. They're doing it at the national level, the regional level. Uh, we are seeing that 
are combining forces on both sides of the border. We see that uh, more people are being trained to understand what the issues are. We see laws that are being put in place. As a result of many of these things coming together, each year we get closer and closer to being able to address the issue more uh, in a more tangible way. And in fact, what we're seeing in countries like Vietnam is that the prosecution and arrest figures continue to go up year after year. And so there is a, a difference that's taking place. Now, again, there's this major anti-human trafficking summit taking place there in Hanoi, Vietnam. Uh, are you and your delegates, have you been aware that CNN has been focusing on Vietnam this week in our Freedom Project special? Myself, but uh, it's a good time to be focusing on Vietnam. The government uh, takes human trafficking very seriously. They've identified it as a a uh, critical area that they will be focusing on. They took the leadership to set up this international conference. It went very, very well within this conference. Not only did the Vietnam government commit itself to addressing human trafficking in a very assertive way, but also the other governments in the Mekong region as well. This includes China, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, uh, Thailand, and Myanmar. They all came together. They all had a common vision of where to go, which is basically to make the world safer, to uh, reduce vulnerabilities, to put the bad guys in jail, and basically to take care of the victims. And they have all committed themselves to moving in the direction of seeing that that happens. You do feel a sense of urgency right now? I certainly do, and so do they. I, I feel the, the entire counter-trafficking community, if you're talking about figures of a quarter of a million people in the region, you're talking about a certain number of people each day who are being trafficked. And every day that goes by that we don't address this, then we realize that more people could be victimized. The UN's Matthew Friedman there and learn more about modern day slavery and how people are taking a stand to stop it. You can also explore how to help. It's all at CNN.com slash Freedom Project. Now, in Afghanistan, food prices are soaring because of drought and war.